This episode of Budget MTG Decks is sponsored by TCG Player, the best place to buy your cards in the US. Welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All the cards you see in our videos are a dollar or less, with exception of the commander cards. Also, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when a new video comes out. Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. I'm David. And I'm Jasper. And today we're going to be talking about a fun and effective pauper deck that you can build without breaking the bank. And today we have a Glinthawk deck for you. Yeah, this deck is uh, a lot of fun. It comes in with very, very inexpensive creatures, which actually have quite a high power and toughness for their cost. They do have some, uh, some hoops you have to jump around, but then we can equip it with stuff and smack our opponents. They usually also have evasion. So the strategy of this deck is gonna be three things. Play inexpensive evasion creatures, equip them with equipment, and then beat your opponents down before they can stabilize. And uh, Jasper, this deck is also uh, pretty inexpensive, right? Yes, the main deck only costs $12.30 to build, and then for less than a dollar you can have a sideboard. So for a total price of $13.17, you have 75 cards that can hopefully make a very decent pauper deck. That is, I think that might be the cheapest deck we've ever built. Very, very inexpensive. Okay, let's have a look at the deck list, uh, group by category. The first category is the beaters. Uh, we've got four copies of Glinthawk, four copies of Court Homunculus, and two copies of Kite Sail Apprentice. Now the Glinthawk comes in super early, can come in as early as turn one, as long as we've got an artifact that doesn't cost any mana that we can pop down before, uh, because otherwise we're gonna have to return it back to our hand. But if we do do that, we do have an extremely powerful creature super early. We've got Court Homunculus as well, is also going to be a 2 2 most of the time for a single mana. And Kite Sail Apprentice is also uh, very frequently going to be a 2 2 with flying. So, as you can see already, for very low mana cost, we're going to have uh, two twos with a flying or just, well, just 2 2 with a Court Homunculus. Yeah. And then next up, we have four copies of Vault Scourge and four copies of Scranton Hawk for beaters. Now, these are a little less effective when it comes to the power in the ratio to their converted mana cost. Vault Scourge, it always comes down for one mana because we can't even generate the black mana. It's Flying and Lifelink, which of course scales very nicely for our equipment. And then Squadron Hawk also makes our deck very resilient because once you get one copy, you get the other three. And you have a lot of creatures in hand, uh, so you'll always be doing something with your mana. Exactly. Then for the equipment, we've got four copies of Bone Saw and four copies of Bone Splitter. Bone Saw, you know, it doesn't give you a lot of power. <laughs> it's just plus one, but it comes in for free, which is really nice for when we want to bounce stuff. And it's nice so that, you know, we can start attacking super early. We can start dealing damage very, very early. And Bone Splitter gives us a little bit more uh, boost to our power, uh, but also extremely uh, efficient. Yeah, I these Bone Saws stand a chance. <laughs> so what are the removal spells? Okay, we've got uh, four copies of Unmake, four copies of Oblivion Ring. Unmake is uh, an is instant card, costs uh, three white mana, because again, we can't generate black mana, and just has exile target creature, which of course is very nice, uh, especially in Pauper, you've got a lot of dredge decks running around, a lot of recursion, so the exile can be very relevant. And then Oblivion Ring, uh, when ends the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent, and then as long as Oblivion Ring stays on the battlefield, the permanent stays exiled, so it gets rid of pretty much anything that doesn't have hexproof. Yeah, it uh, really can handle anything pretty much. And then we have uh, a draw spell, and that is four copies of Survival Cache. Uh, essentially, it says we're going to gain two life, and then if we have more life than an opponent, we're going to be drawing a card, and then we, it has rebound, so next time we can do it again. And usually, we can play this so early on in the game, we've already attacked a few times, you know, just two damage, three damage with our, our low-cost creatures, so we will have more life, and it's going to be able to essentially draw us two cards for yeah. very inexpensive, and gaining us four yeah. life. When you're already winning, this card can pretty much shield the game, especially, of course, if we've got false cards running around, carrying a few bone splitters, gaining us five life every swing. Yeah. It's pretty much going to be uh, closing out the game entirely. Exactly. That Then uh, the lands, very simple, just 22 planes. Uh, as Jasper already said, we can't produce black, we don't need to produce anything else. Just white planes are just uh, producing white mana is all that we need. Now let's have a look at the sideboard. So now let's take a look at the sideboard cards. We've got three copies of Beckett Apparition and three copies of Build to Last. A back on exploration is an instant spell that we can play for a single white mana. It exiles a single card from a graveyard and gives us a 1-1 white and black spirit token with flying. 
and then build to last. Uh, it gives the creature plus two plus two until end of turn. And if it's an artifact creature, it also gives indestructible until end of turn. So you've got back and apparition to get rid of flashback cards, uh, cards that really need to be dealt with before the opponent can recur them. It has a nice bonus in giving us a creature to chump block with, or even race with, or even equip because it does have evasion. Yeah. And then build to last is of course a very nice buff spell that also happens to make our eight artifact creatures indestructible. Yeah. And then we have three copies of Fragment, Fragmentize, three copies of Sunlance, and three copies of Celestial Flare. Uh, Fragmentize, very good against those affinity decks, those decks that like to run a lot of artifacts or enchantments for that matter. A Sunlance, if we, they're not playing uh, white, it's essentially a, a lightning bolt that we can use to kill our opponent's creatures. And Celestial Flare, Flare is excellent against those Boggle decks and against pretty much any other decks where they like to pop a lot of good stuff onto one creature and then we're going to make them uh, sacrifice it, yeah. which is pretty nice. That is it for the sideboard. Let's have a look at two example starting hands. Well, let's take a look at two possible starting hands. The first hand, we've got uh, three planes, a bone saw, a glint hawk, a squadron hawk, and an unmake. And on the other hand, we've got three planes, a court homunculus, and a bone splitter, a vault scourge, and a survival cache. Now the first hand, of course, uh, can start out very aggressive. You can run onto Glint Hawk on to game one, uh, dump the Bone Saw, bounce the Bone Saw, play the Bone Saw again, and then equip it on turn two and start split, swinging. Or you might want to go wide, you play the Scrotton Hawk turn two, you load up your hand, and then you've got the Unmake to deal with any pesky blockers that your opponent might have. Second hand is, of course, a matter of do you want to attack in the air or over land. If you can attack over land, you run out the Court Homunculus, which is a bit stronger than Vault Scourge. But the Vault Scourge has the evasion, it has the lifelink. So if you're dealing with a very aggressive deck or a deck that goes wide, then the Vault Scourge might be the better play. But either way, you have options and then you have Survival Cash to start refilling your hand. Perfect. Now let's have a look at some non-budget upgrades. Yeah. For this deck, we only have one non-budget upgrade. Our suggestion would be to take out Unmake and to replace it with Journey to Nowhere. Uh, it is one mana cheaper, so that is the benefit. We can play it uh, a little bit faster, and of course, we can play it for a little bit cheaper by having Journey to Nowhere and being able to exile target creature. However, the, the downside is, of course, the Journey to Nowhere is not instant speed as it is an enchantment, so uh, you may want to think whether that's, uh, that's worth it in your own meta, so you can choose whether you wish to, uh, to make that change. That is it for the non-budget upgrades. Thank you very much for watching. I'm David. I'm Jasper. And this was Budget MTG Dex. Find all the cards discussed in this video in the description below. Also, show you're a fan of the channel by rocking this awesome Budget MTG Dex merchandise. This show was made possible by the support of our loyal patrons. Head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex and donate as little as a dollar per month.